All right, this is the solution video for section 7.1, problem number 17. All right, so it says find the exact area under f of x equals 3 minus x from negative 2 to 2 by dividing negative 2 to 2 into n equal subintervals and using inscribed rectangles. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to come up with a, uh, a picture graphically of what we're looking at here, right? So we've got uh, the function 3 minus x. So that would be a line with a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So something like that. All right. And we're going from negative 2 to 2. Right. Um, and so we're trying to estimate this area using inscribed rectangles. Now, remember, we're using uh, an infinite number of rectangles. Right. And so uh, remember, we're really div dividing this up into infinitely thin rectangles. Right. And that's going to find the exact area. Right. So our function f of x is 3 minus x. Our interval is negative 2 to 2. So this is like our a and our b, right? And our uh, delta x, right, our width of each rectangle is going to be uh, 4, right? Because we're going from negative 2 to 2, right? So remember, uh, 4 is going to be the difference between a and b over n, right? And so we're going to use an infinite number of rectangles. We're doing the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of the delta x times the f of a plus k delta x. Right? So that's kind of like the general formula, right? So we're going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of. All right, delta x. What is delta x? That's 4 over n times the f of x function. So 3 minus x. So 3 minus x. Now remember, x in this case is a plus k delta x. So a is negative 2 plus k times delta x, which is 4 over n. Right. So now it's important that I have parentheses around the a plus k delta x, and then I have parentheses around the 3 minus x so that the 4 over n gets distributed through. All right. And so now I just have to do the work to kind of simplify this. All right. So I'm going to leave my limit alone, limit as n approaches infinity, sum from k equals 1 to n. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that negative sign. So I have 4 over n. All right. And then I have 3 plus 2 and then minus. And I'm going to rewrite that as just like 4k over n. How about that? All right, so now 3 plus 2, obviously 5. All right, so let's write that as 5. All right, and then I'm going to distribute the 4 over n. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of. All right, so if I distribute that, I get 20 over n minus, if I distribute that, I get 16k over n squared. All right, and so now what I want to do is I have two things. Uh, subtracted, and so I'm going to uh, apply the summation to them separately. All right, so now I have the limit as n approaches infinity, all right? And then inside of that is I have the sum from k equals 1 to n of 20 over n minus the sum from k equals 1 to n of 16k over n squared. All right. So uh, the first part here, all right, I have the sum from k equals 1 to n of 20 over n. Now, remember, the sum is in terms of k, right? And so this would be 20 over n plus 20 over n plus 20 over n plus 20 over n, 20 over n, n times, right? And so really, all this thing becomes is 20 over n times n, right? So let's head up here, all right? So this becomes 20 over n times n, right, which really just becomes 20, right? Okay, then I have this next part, okay, and I have the sum, oh, sorry, I almost forgot about the limit as n approaches infinity, right? Okay, don't forget about that, all right, uh, and then I have the sum from k equals 1 to n of 16k 
over n squared. Now remember, 16 over n squared, that does not play a role with the k, right? So I'm going to factor out the 16 over n squared and then multiply uh, by the sum from k equals 1 to n of k, right? And so what you need to remember is that that value is n times n plus 1 over 2, right? And so that is uh, the value that we have, okay? Um, all right, and so now what we have here is this thing. If you were to multiply it out, you're going to end up with a 16n squared, right, as your leading term over a 2n squared, right? And so now when we apply the limit, right, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of 20, right, because those n's reduce, minus, okay, now, like I said before, okay, if we multiply this out, we get 16n squared, right, uh, and then this would be uh, plus 16n, right, and then all divided by 2n squared. Now, the limit as n approaches infinity of 20, well, that's just 20, right, because there's no n there, so that doesn't matter, all right, and then minus the limit as n approaches infinity of, now, if I just bring this negative sign in, I get negative 16n squared minus 16n over 2n squared. All right, so now, as n gets infinitely large, remember, okay, we are taking because these have the same degree, we're taking the leading coefficient, which is negative 16. Uh, sorry, this should become a plus, right? Because I distributed that negative. I get uh, a negative 16 over a 2, and so I get negative 8. So I get 20 plus negative 8, and so my answer is 12. So 12 is the exact area under the curve. So that is problem number 17.